All right, here we go. The thematic campaign continues, and it's time to bust some more ghosts. The passing of the Great Company. All right, lots of different stuff here. So we can change out our heroes without incurring the threat penalty, not worrying about that. I can raise my threat by one to search my deck for Andril and add it to my hand. And then we're going to remove a bunch of the burdens. These are the, let's call them Frodo burdens. Okay, so Andriel is currently in my deck. You create your deck before you set up the quest, and you actually draw your opening hand before you do the quest setup. All right, so we have these boons. We have Lembus. We have old bogey stories. We have the Palantir, which will go on Aragorn, and I'm thinking I'm going to use it this quest. That's why I'm using the awesome... Vision of the Palantir playmat that I got from supporting Dan's blog over at Vision of the Palantir. So let's talk about the Palantir for a moment. It's supposed to be shuffled into my deck, but I'm trying to play these quests as thematically as possible. And before Aragorn travels the paths of the dead, he gazes into the Palantir and he puts his will against the will of Sauron. And I want to do that. I want to look into the Palantir before I start this quest. And the only way for me to do that is to start with it in play. I mean, I could get lucky and draw it in my opening hand, but I'm going to break a rule and I'm going to start with the Palantir in play and I'm going to use it on turn one. Now, this, this could be incredibly bad because to use the Palantir, I have to exhaust Aragorn. So I'm going to be going into the first round with Aragorn exhausted, whether I am successful with the Palantir or not. So that's what I've decided to do. But if you're playing this by the rules, you shuffle the Palantir into your deck. And if you draw it, you can use it. I just didn't want to use it while I was in the middle of the caves with the Paths of the Dead or fighting Corsairs. I mean, I wanted to use the Palantir when I was supposed to thematically. Okay, uh, let's continue on here. Ho Tom Bombadil will be going in my hand once I draw my opening hand and decide to keep it. All right, let's take a look at 1A. The Forbidden Door setup. We're going to set the Stone of Eric and the Army of Dead aside out of play. We're going to attach Overcome by Fear to our Threat Dial. And then we will remove the other three copies of Overcome by Fear. All right, what is Overcome by Fear? This is Gimli terrified to go underground. Uh, set up, we're going to attach it to our Threat Dial. Limit one per Threat Dial. You cannot reduce your threat. And then Forced. At the end of the round, raise your threat by one. Then you can spend one fellowship resource to detach this and set it aside. So at the end of the round, you're going to raise your threat by two. The normal raise and then the raise from this overcome by fear. And then you have the opportunity to get rid of it. And your threat goes up like nuts in this quest. So you want to get rid of that thing. On the other side, 1B, when revealed, each player may add one resource to the resource pool of each of the heroes he controls. Each player who did this has to raise their threat by three and then forced at the end of the planning phase, discard all the cards in your hand and advance to 2A. Okay, so I wanted to go through that before I talked about my deck because obviously that affects the type of cards you wanna put in your deck. So let's take a look at that. And while I'm talking about the deck in the upper right is going to be a game that I played where I lost because I threaded it out. Big surprise. Okay, so here's the build I did for this quest. So let's catch up with the story in case you haven't read it in a while. So Aragorn is actually traveling with Theoden back to Helm's Deep after visiting Isengard. And he is met up by the Dunedain. So the Dunedain catch up with him. So I have a bunch of Dunedain allies. He's also traveling with Gimli, Legolas, and the Merry. Riding with the Dunedain are Eladan and Elrohir, the twin sons of Elrond. Now, Arwen is not with them, but I wanted to make sure she showed up at some point in this playthrough. One of the quests I needed to include Arwen. And this is a great one for it. Halbarad, let's make sure I say it right, Halbarad is carrying the banner of Elendil, which is awesome. It gives Aragorn uh, an artifact, which means he's not going to exhaust a quest, thanks to his ability. And then also while he's committed to the quest, everybody else gets plus one willpower. And then while he's attacking... Everybody else gets plus one attack. And this is made by Arwen. So Arwen isn't there, but she's there in spirit, right? Like she is there. She's driving Aragorn. She's one of the reasons he wants to keep fighting. He wants to keep pushing. She is boosting his willpower, okay? So that's what she's doing in this quest. She will be committing her three willpower to the quest, which we might as well think of as Aragorn 
is getting a willpower boost from her. Definitely the banner helps him along with Calabrian Stone. And then uh, in addition to that, she lets me discard a card to give a resource to a Noldor or Aragorn. And so that means because her brothers are here and Aragorn is here, the resource that she is generating with her ability can go to any of the four heroes. Excellent resource smoothing. Eladan and Elrahir boost each other, so I really wanted to get the twins in at some point. So they give... Uh, Elrahir gets plus two defense, Eladan gets plus two attack, and they can each spend a resource and ready after doing their respective action. The card, of course, that I want Arwen to discard is Elven Light, because then I can spend a spirit resource, pull it back into my hand, and draw a card. And if you remember, I'm going to be discarding my hand after the first planning phase. So getting cards back into hand is going to be really, really important. Some of the attachments I want to find. Steed of the North, I want to put on one of the twins, probably Eladan. I'll probably be questing with him. And then if I need him to help attack, he'll pop up thanks to the Steed of the North. He can ride it because he is a ranger. And then I really want to get the Shining Shield or a Dunedain Warning on Elra here. I'd love to get his defense up to four because the enemies do have plus one attacks and there is one enemy that attacks for four and these enemies have the phantom keyword which means instead of taking damage you raise your threat and this quest really really raises your threat so it's incredibly important to try to mitigate how much your threat is going up as much as possible so just getting him up to four is super important i'm going to be hitting 40 threat really quick because my starting threat is 29 but it might as well be 33 because i'm raising it by four at the start of the game and so he'll be at 40, which will give him plus two defense with the Shining Shield. Maybe a second copy of the Shining Shield might be useful in this deck. Could just add it as your 51st card if you wanted to. You need to have a way to handle how much your threat is going up. It's going up a ton. So Favor of the Valar is a way to drop it back down to 45 when it does hit your threat elimination level. Uh, you're almost guaranteed to need at least one of these. I have definitely lost... Quite a few games because I never found one of these. The other threat reduction in this deck is Elrond's Council. But you cannot drop your threat while Overcome by Grief is attached to your threat dial. So that means if you draw this in your opening hand, you're going to have to discard it. So that's why Dwarven Tomb is in here. You can pull Elrond's Council back out of your discard pile and then play it. And also, you know, we're basically traveling through a tomb. So it's not a dwarven tomb, but it's kind of thematic. The other thing this quest does is while you're at stage two, if you want to play any cards during the planning phase, you have to raise your threat by one first. So you either raise your threat by one or you say you're not going to play any cards. So what's nice is having ways to put allies and attachments into play that don't need to happen in the planning phase. So we have a very good tail. So a very good tail lets me exhaust allies that are already in play and then I can hopefully get a couple more allies in. Ranger of Cardolan's amazing for this because if I pop him in in the combat phase, he actually stays in play to the end of the round, which means he readies in the refresh phase, allowing me to do a very good tale. A very good tale is also very thematic because this is the part of the book where Mary talks to Theoden and tells him about the Shire, and they sit down and have a very good talk. This is also the chapters where Mary basically pledges to Theoden that he wants to be an Esquire of Rohan, and I just love that part of the book, so I'm really glad to include Mary in this deck because it's an important moment for his character. The other ways I have of playing cards outside of the planning phase would be Reforged. So Reforged is just an action, and it lets you play an attachment from your discard pile and put it into play. You don't need to be in the planning phase. And it's also incredibly thematic for where we are because the Reforged Sword, Andril, is how Aragorn is able to summon the Army of the Dead and prove who he is. So Reforging is uh, very important in this chapter. Also Stand and Fight. So you could look at it like we're asking the Oath Keepers to stand and fight for us. But it's also very, very mechanically great because it's just an action. So in any action window, I can grab an ally that has a sphere from my discard pile and put it into play, paying its cost with spirit resources. Need Drives Them is here. Uh, it's really just there for thematic purposes. I mean, yeah, I maybe need to ready everybody, but I doubt it. It's just very thematic. I wanted to include a single copy. I also would have liked to have included a single copy of Path of Need but I find that this card doesn't really help me too much in this quest. It's pretty expensive. 
Uh, the final card that I want to talk about is Wait No Longer. So the art is the mustering of Rohan. The flavor text is Aragorn saying we must press the enemy. So it's incredibly thematic and it's also mechanically awesome for this quest. So I get to look at the top five cards of the encounter deck, grab an enemy from there, put it in play engaged with me, and then I don't have to reveal an encounter card. And in this quest, I'm trying to make a lot of progress as fast as possible. So not revealing a card, adding no threat to staging, and knowing exactly what's going to happen in combat uh, is incredibly, incredibly useful. And as you've noticed, probably, I have three copies of Wait No Longer and one copy of Legolas. That's it for my tactics resources. The only thing I'm spending these tactics resources on is neutral cards. So the Ranger of Cardolan, Thalion, Favor of the Valar, uh, Andril. So most of the tactics resources are, aren't being spent. So Wait No Longer is a great way to spend them. So this is the build. Very easy to lose against this quest because your threat can just start going through the roof. You just really can't help it sometimes. And every time I have lost, it's because I threaded out. So you can try to pack more threat reduction in the deck if you want, or you can just try to blast through the quest as fast as possible. Obviously, the easiest way to avoid the threading out is to not play with three heroes that give you a starting threat of 29. Just bring like a messenger of the king, Sam, and you know, your starting threat is eight. You'll not thread out, but there are ways to handle this quest. But if you just show up without any threat reduction, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to beat this quest. All right, let's get back to the table. All right, so I threaded out on my first game, not uncommon. I didn't draw hardly any of my threat reduction, and I need to find some of it. In my opening hand, I'd really like to find Elven Light because I'm going to need to build my hand back up after I discard everything. I also wouldn't mind seeing something to boost the defense of Eldra here because there are enemies that attack for four, and there's also shadows that boost their attack by one, and if I take damage, it actually goes as threat because these enemies all have the phantom keyword so I need to be careful about having my threat go up from attacks from overcome by fear from the quest itself very easy to threat out so let's see what I get in my opening hand I also wouldn't mind finding Andril because then I don't have to raise my threat to find it okay well there is favor of the Valar that's great uh, Adunadine a very good tale there's Elven Light and then wait no longer, and then that defense boost. Oh, right. Okay, very good opening hand. Obviously, I could discard any card to Arwen to get a resource, but getting an Elven Light in my discard pile is great, and I'm also not discarding any threat reduction. So let's raise my threat by four. I'm going to raise it by one so I can find Andril, and then I'm going to raise it by three to give everybody an additional resource. Okay. If I had drawn Elrond's Council, I couldn't play it because Overcome by Grief is on my threat dial and I can't drop my threat. So whatever I do here, I need to try to save a resource on Aragorn so I can get rid of Overcome by Grief. And then any Elrond's Councils that I do draw, I can play because, man, your threat, I mean, it just goes up so fast in this quest. It is crazy. And I'm starting at 33. So, I mean, that's already very high. So it's, it's, it's just so easy to throw out. That last game, if you were kind of watching in the upper right, yeah, I mean, it was going okay, but I just, I couldn't drop my threat back down. Okay, the card we draw is the Ranger of Cardolan because I can actually draw a card. There's no Gandalf's delay. Uh, the Ranger of Cardolan, that kind of stinks to have drawn that because he does not have a sphere. Let's start out. I'll use Arwen's ability to discard a card and get a resource. I think I'll just put it on Arwen, but see, I wanted to put allies in my discard pile that I could trigger with stand and fight, but they have to have a sphere. Okay, this token, which is also from the vision of the Palantir, is letting me know that I used Arwen's ability, so I don't use her ability twice in the same turn. These are the four cards I'd like to get in play, but I only can afford three of them, so I think the one I want to not play, I guess, is the Ranger of Cardolan. Kind of a bummer. All right, let's play Andril. That's going to go on Aragorn. He's going to get plus one to his stats, and then after he's the defender, Andril will trigger an attack, and Aragorn gets to attack the enemy without having to ready. If I could ready Aragorn, I could actually use him to attack that same enemy, because it's Andril triggering that first attack, not the player. 
And then I'm going to put Favor of the Valar on my threat dial. So if I ever hit 50, that'll drop me down to 45. And then finally, a Shining Shield will go on Elra here. He's going to get plus one defense. And then when I hit 40 threat, which I know I will, he'll be defending for two more. And then thanks to Eladan, he will be defending for five, which uh, is really going to save my threat from going up because I should be able to handle pretty much every attack without having to take any threat increase. That phantom keyword, don't forget about it. It's real easy to just add the damage from an attack. Okay, at the end of planning, I discard all my cards. So there goes Hotown Bombadil and all the other cards I had in hand. And now we will advance to stage 2A, the Paths of the Dead. When revealed, we're gonna search for a different location and add it to the staging area, and then we're gonna give the encounter deck a shuffle. All right, I already grabbed the location, so I'll look at that in a minute. To be X progress needed. X is the threat of the player with the highest threat. That stinks. And then each player cannot reduce his threat below his initial threat level. And then at the beginning of the planning phase, we have to choose. We're either gonna raise our threat by one, or we can't play cards. Okay, I have chose the haunted path. It's only one threat, it's four progress, it gets plus one threat for each player with a threat of 35 or higher. And then to travel there, guess what? We need to raise our threat. Okay, so thematically what's happening here is we are in the Pass of the Dead, so we don't get stuff, like there's nothing helping us. So that's why you have to really plan your planning phases. You basically don't play any cards in the planning phase, and then you just kind of do a big planning phase where you dump a bunch of cards in all at once because like I said your threat goes nuts but before we do that this is the chapter where Aragorn looked into the Palantir and put his will against Sauron's and we earned the Palantir when we were in Isengard so what we can do as a quest action is we exhaust Aragorn and the Palantir and then we're going to discard the top card of the encounter deck and compare Aragorn's willpower to the threat of that card if Aragorn's willpower is greater we do not reveal a card this round. And so I think we do that. Thematically, it makes sense to do it before we actually start questing against the Paths of the Dead. So this is a one and done. So no matter what happens, we only can look into Palantir once. So we're going to exhaust Aragorn. It's three willpower. Ah, yes, the deadly road. All right, so he gazed into the Palantir. He saw a deadly road, but his willpower was greater. And so that means we're not revealing a card. So I'm going to send everybody else that is ready. So we are sending seven, and we were up against one. So we're going to start out by making six progress, and we got to make as much progress as our threat. Awesome. All right, well, let's travel. Raising our threat by one. I'm very glad to have gotten that successful gaze into the Palantir. That's, that's very cool. Okay, so now... I raise my threat at the end of the round, everybody readies, and then I'm going to raise my threat again for Overcome by Fear, spend Aragorn's resource, and remove Overcome by Fear, and our threat is sitting at 36 already. Yeah. All right. Resources gained. Another Elven Light drawn. So now what I'm going to do in the action window in the resource phase, I'm going to discard the Elven Light, put a resource on Arwen. And then while I'm still in this action window, I can spend one of those resources and draw a card. So this action window here in the resource phase is going to be very important. Arwen gets the token saying I already discarded a card and the card we draw is reforged. Okay, well, if I had an attachment in my discard pile, I could right now use reforged and get it back. But unfortunately, I don't have any attachments in my discard pile. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could spend another one of Arwen's resources, draw the second Elven Light, and another card. Just trying to get cards back in my hand. But, uh, okay, let's not do that right now. Let's wait. And we are going to not play any cards in the planning phase, so I do not need to raise my threat. And let's go questing. So Aragorn does not exhaust a quest as long as he has an artifact, which he does. We are sending 10 and we reveal, ooh, blood runs chill. All right, doomed one. When revealed, each player with a threat of 35 or higher deals one damage to each exhausted character he controls. Well, that's going to be all the siblings. They're all going to take a damage, but we added no threat, so I am okay with that. So we are going to make all 10 progress. So four will go on the active location, six more on the quest, putting us up to 12. 
Okay, that was a successful round. So we are at 12 progress, and we are now at 38 threat. So we've still got quite a ways to go. Everyone's going to ready, get their resources, and the card we draw. Jeez, really? Okay, my third Elven Light. That's very strange. So let's trigger Arwen. Uh, we will discard the card to get a resource, spend the resource, pull Elven Light right back, and we draw the Ranger card to land, which I could afford, but I don't think it's worth raising my threat by one just to play one card. You really, really need to be conservative about raising your threat. Like, just do it when you when you really want to. So let's pull back another Elven Light, and we get a very good tail. Okay, that is very good, because the Ranger of Cardaland is the perfect target for a very good tail. I just need another ally in play. But it's good to know that I have that combo getting ready to be built. So let's go questing once again, sending everybody and Aragorn can defend if I need to, and I'm going to need to. All right, so we get the Ghosts of Men, Oathbreaker, Undead, Phantom, when revealed. We either attach a set-aside overcome by grief to our threat dial, or we're going to get immediately attacked. Okay, so I can handle the attack because Aragorn is ready. I just won't be able to engage this guy and defend it because I quested with Elra here. So I can either take the overcome by fear... Or I take the attack and don't engage the enemy, because luckily my threat is below 40. Let's attach the Overcome by Fear, and I want to get this guy out of the staging area. I think it makes more sense to do that. So I'm going to attach Overcome by Fear. We are going to make seven more progress. Let's engage this guy. He's attacking for three. Any damage he would do is actually threat. So it's three against three, and it's a deadly road as the shadow, which means no shadow effect. So I take no threat increase from that attack. And then because of Andriel, Aragorn can attack back. So he's swinging back for four and actually hits this guy for three damage. Now, I could have popped in this Ranger of Cardolan and I would have been able to kill this guy. But I am not popping in the Ranger of Cardolan while I have a very good tail in my hand. I want to definitely be able to trigger that combo. So we're going to wait. My threat's going to go up by two. One for the normal end of the round effect. One for Overcome by Fear. Aragorn had a resource to spend, so I can detach Overcome by Fear. And we are now at 40 threat, so Elra here will be defending for 5, and we draw Mary. Okay, well that's nice. Now I do have two allies, so if I wanted to play Mary, I could do the A Very Good Tale if I ever engage another enemy. Uh, let's, while we're still in the action window in the resource phase... Let's do Elven Light, and I'm going to give the resource to Elra here. I'm going to spend one of Arwen's resources, and we draw a Northern Tracker. Okay, so we're doing all this in the resource phase. I had thought about raising my threat by one to play Mary, but then I realized next round I could also play the Northern Tracker. So uh, I backed my threat back down and decided not to play any cards in the planning phase. Let's go into the quest phase. I'm going to leave Elra here ready because if I get another enemy, I want to be able to engage it or take the immediate attack if it's another one of these same enemies. So we are going to be sending a total of eight willpower. We're currently up against nothing. And then if I don't get an enemy, I can definitely kill the one I'm engaged with. So let's see what we get. We get the Dark Door. It's a 4-4. And while it's in the staging area, progress can't be placed on locations in the staging area. And to travel there, we got to reveal an encounter card. Um, that's a good time to get this, to be honest. So it's four threat. We sent eight. We're going to make four more progress. It's just, you know, it's hard to <laughs> quest through this stage because your threat's going up, kind of negating any progress you do make. Okay, uh, so I am now at 23 progress. So let's put that token there to say I've made 20. And then let's travel to the dark door and reveal an encounter card. And we get... Okay, Whispers in the Dark. When revealed, either attach a set-aside overcome by fear to your threat dial, or each character you control gets minus one to their stats. Doing some quick math, I can still defend this enemy and kill it, and this is a great encounter card to have revealed not in the quest phase because it doesn't affect my willpower. I revealed it in the travel phase, so it didn't matter that I dropped my willpower so yeah, let's just take that effect. Everybody is one less, so Elra here is defending for four. Uh, the shadow is plus one, so I don't have to raise my threat because it's four against four. So that is excellent. Thank you, Shining Shield. 
And then Aragorn can attack for three, which is enough to kill this guy. Okay, that was that was great. That was really, really great. And we will go into the next round, 41 threat. Okay, the card we draw is another favor of the Valar. Okay, well, now my threat is fine because I could reforge the one that I have to discard off the current threat dial. I can play the one I have in hand. Only one can be on threat dial at any given time, but um, I basically have a way to drop my threat by 15 over the course of three different instances. So um, I don't have to worry about my threat anymore. Okay, let's do Elven Light. So I'm going to give that resource to Arwen and she now has four resources. So that means if I do raise my threat by one, I can play three allies. I can play a Northern Tracker, Ranger of Cardolan, and Mary. So that is totally worth raising my threat. So like I said, you just kind of wait and then you do big planning phases. So Mary's gonna give all unique allies plus one willpower when he enters play, so that's just himself. The Ranger of Cardolan, his effect was a combat effect, so he's just a nice 2-2-2 two, two, two ally. And then of course the Northern Tracker can place progress on locations in the staging area when he commits to the quest. So that is excellent. I'm just going to spend most of Elra Dan's resources for the Ranger of Cardolan because uh, like I said in the deck building part of the video, his resources are mostly spent on neutral cards. There's a couple tactics cards. And then of course, Elra here had resources to pay for Mary. Okay, so we just added basically six willpower this round. It's five willpower all the next rounds because Mary only boosts unique allies willpower the round he enters play. So let's make some progress and try to get out of this stage two. I have to get to 42 and I'm currently at 23. All right, and I got a four progress location to deal with. So Aragorn for three, Mary for three, the Ranger for two, Arwen for three, and then I think, let's keep going, Ella Dan for two more. And yeah, let's send a total of 13 and we get another Ghosts of Men. Okay, well, I can definitely handle the attack. He should still be in the staging area. So Ella here is going to defend and then ready himself by spending a resource. There was no shadow, so he's fine. Three threat and staging. So that means we're going to make 10 progress. Four goes on the active. Six goes on the quest. So that's going to put us at 29. And we got to get to 42. All right, we're, we're heading there. We're getting there. All right, so let's definitely engage this guy. And then I can either defend with Aragorn or Elra here. I think I'll defend with Elra here. He does not need to ready. And we are good. And then I can use the Northern Tracker and Aragorn to kill this guy. Okay, so we are handling combat, no problem. Let's go into the next round. My threat is at 43. And the card we draw, wow, another Ranger of Cardolan. Well, that's great because now when we engage an enemy, we can definitely trigger the very good tail that round because I have lots of allies in play and hopefully I can get two more in with a very good tail. Let's do Elven Light and I make a little mistake here. I meant to discard Elven Light, give Arwen the resource, spend the resource and pull Elven Light right back into my hand. I left Elven Light in my discard pile on accident. But the card we draw is Wait No Longer, which is really excellent timing because I can now spend two tactics resources at the beginning of the quest phase and we just look for an enemy in the top five cards, put it in play engaged with us, and then we don't reveal an encounter card. So let's do that. So we're not gonna play any cards in planning. And wow, geez, look at all the enemies. Okay. Uh, I want the one, this one right here. This one does not have to trigger its when revealed effect. So it's a great one to get into play when you're not revealing it. So let's grab the Faithless Dead. It's also pretty weak. So um, that's an excellent card to have gotten from Wait No Longer. And because we just engaged an enemy, I can pop in this Ranger of Card to land for one resource, and we're gonna be able to do a very good tail at the end of the round. So we're gonna make a ton of progress this quest phase. Let's go. I know I'm not revealing any threat, and I just need to make 14 progress to advance to stage uh, three. So I'm going to send exactly 14 willpower. I really wish I had the banner of Elendil because then I could be questing with everyone boosted by at least one. And I also wonder, the sword that was broken player attachment, I haven't been using it because the sword was reforged. 
So that seems like I shouldn't use that card, but I mean, Andril is the sword that was broken. I don't know. What do you guys think? Was that card a card that could be included at this point? Or do you just think of that as the sword that was broken is Andril before it was reforged, and then Andril is the reforged sword, so I can't use the sword that was broken. I, I look at it the second way. Okay, but anyway, uh, we advance. So we're at stage three. The dead are following. When revealed, we're going to add the Stone of Eric and the Army of the Dead enemy to the staging area. Enemy side face up. And then each player can raise their threat by three to detached, overcome by fear from his threat dial, and set it aside. Okay, that's I don't need to do that. So let's grab those two cards. So we have the Army of the Dead. It's X threat, where X is twice the number of players. Six attack, two and eight. Phantom, immune, undead, oathbreaker, and then forced. When it attacks you, we either need to attach, overcome by fear to our threat dial, or discard an ally. Okay, so that's two threat and staging. Then the Stone of Eric, five threat, five progress, immune, it's a hill, and then forced. After Stone of Eric becomes the active location, each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for an oathbreaker enemy and adds it to the staging area. We're going to give the encounter deck a shuffle, but to travel there, we got to remove five progress from 3B. Okay, so let's take a look at 3B. 3B is five progress needed, and then while the Stone of Eric is the active location, each Oathbreaker loses the Phantom keyword and gets minus 20 engagement. When the Stone of Eric leaves play as an explored location, we win. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> it's kind of nice in a way that they lose the phantom keyword if you were worried about threatening out because then you can just take it as damage. You don't have to worry about damage actually being assigned as threat. We do not need to engage the army of the dead, so let's not. All right, we're going to get attack. Elra here can defend. Uh, no shadow. He did not need to ready back up. Aragorn and the northern tracker can kill this guy easily. And then we're going to go into the end of the round. So you raise your threat, everybody readies, and then in the action window in the refresh phase, I'm going to use a very good tail because that ranger I popped in leaves at the end of the round. So I'm going to exhaust him and the northern tracker. So that is a total of eight resources worth of allies that I did exhausted. And now I'm going to give the deck a shuffle, and we're going to discard the top five cards, and I can put in two allies that have a combined cost of eight. I'm... I'm just hoping to get one, and then maybe I'll discard the banner. Ooh, well, there's a good one. There's Sulian. All right, that's excellent. And then, uh, nothing. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. I was really hoping to discard an attachment for my reforged I had in my hand. But uh, I'm very happy to replace the Ranger of Cardolan with Sulian, because she'll stay in play. And then the Ranger of Cardolan gets shuffled into my deck. So, yeah, no attachments in my discard pile for reforged to pull back out. Hmm, that's kind of a bummer, but I think you can see how that combo works. So very good tail puts the attachment in your discard pile, reforged, we'll play it. So uh, that's pretty fun. All right, let's go into the next round and the card we draw for the, <laughs> for the fourth time I draw a Ranger of Cardolan. Wow, okay, that's pretty crazy. So at this point, the only card I really want to find is that banner, just because it's really thematic for this quest to have it. So let's pull an Elven Light out of my discard pile and see if Arwen can make the banner. Uh, no, but we do get a, an Andrix guardman, Guardsman. Uh, he's really good. He only costs two, and then if you were engaged with a non-unique enemy, you, that enemy would not attack you based on his... Uh, text so that's that's a nice card to get really it's a nice little cheap ally and it's a cheap ally so when the army of the dead attacks me i can just discard him okay i'm going to use arwen's ability to put elven light in my discard pile i have this ranger of card land in my hand in case i need to put it in play when i engage an enemy we are currently up against a decent amount of threat we're up against seven and i am perfectly fine not putting five progress on the quest this phase, this round, I mean. I really want to kill the army of the dead. So we reveal a haunted path, which is going to be two threat. So we had sent 12, so we're going to make three of the five progress. That's fine. If I had the banner, I probably would have been able to do this, but I don't have the banner. All right, so let's travel to the path. We have to raise our threat, and then we are going to engage the army of the dead. This is another one of those quests where 
the theme is a little off like we're attacking these enemies which obviously in the novel they didn't attack them they wanted them to follow them and become friends but okay at any rate uh, we are getting attacked by this army of the dead he's going to attack for six and i'm going to have to discard the guardsman after he attacks so an attack of six i can defend for five with elra here and i'm just doing the math to see if i need to pop in this ranger of cardolan i have in my hand uh, assuming everything goes to plan I am not going to need to pop that guy in. I will have enough attack. So let's uh, let's have the attack happen. I'm going to spend the resource to ready Elra here after he's defending for five. And the shadow is nothing. So I have to raise my threat by one because it was one damage I would have had to have taken. I'm going to discard the guardsmen. And then I can swing back. The twins are attacking for five. The ranger in play is two. Aragorn for four. And that is enough. So let's uh, grab this army of the dead. Oh, there was uh, something on the back here, huh? Okay, he goes in the victory display and there's no more enemies in play. All we gotta do is clear the stone of Eric and we will win this quest. All right, my threat is 47. You know, normally I'd be scared, but I got that favor of the Valar on my threat dial. So nothing to worry about there. We got some resources and then we get Clebrian stone. All right, well, that's nice. So then Aragorn will be questing for two more and he also gains the spirit resource icon. As soon as I put Clebrian stone on Aragorn, I pretty much forgot that I did. Okay. <laughs> and then we're gonna play a bunch of elven lights. I'm just really digging for this banner. Uh, we get stand and fight. Okay, so I can pull an ally out of my discard pile that has a, a sphere. And then I have another elven light in my discard pile so let's play that one there's no more raise your threat if you're doing stuff in the planning phase so um don't need to worry about that i draw a dwarven tomb which is really nice i'm going to play that actually and the card i'm going to pull out of my discard pile is elrond's council because uh that'll let me drop my threat by three right now and quest for one more so why not let's discard elven light and i'll give the resource to arwen and then Arwen's gonna spend that resource. This time I did it right. And, okay, nope, we get another Dunedain. So no banner to be found, unfortunately, bummer. All right, let's go into the quest phase. I'm gonna drop my threat by three. I'm gonna give Aragorn plus one willpower. So he's actually questing for six. But uh, like I said, I forget that he has Calabrian stone on him right now. So I do put my tracker token two willpower below where it needs to be we got to get through a four threat location i want to place a total of 10 progress on the quest we only have three at the moment so i'd like to place seven more if at all possible and okay we get this whispers in the dark so either overcome by fear gets attached or everybody gets minus one to all their stats so doing a little math uh yeah, if I remember Calabrian Stone, it might have made a difference, but honestly, I'm not worried about threatening out. So let's just do the Overcome by Grief, so then I don't have to worry about recalculating all of my stats. And we are going to place a total of 10 on the quest. So we have 10 progress on the quest. So that means we can travel to the Stone of Eric by removing 5. That'll leave 5 on the quest. So all we got to do is clear the Stone of Eric. When we traveled there, we need to find an enemy so i'm gonna find that same oath breaker that has the when revealed effect put him engaged with me he's an absolute wimp so i really don't need to worry about this guy he's only attacking for three and he just takes five to kill and uh enemies right now they do damage because i'm at the stone of eric but i'm like i said i'm not worried about that because elra here is defending for five and the shadow was the same card we just revealed. So attacking enemy gets plus one, no problem. Let's kill this guy. There's me going, hey, look at that. I had Clebrian Stone, I wonder if that would have mattered. Oh well, okay, so that guy's dead. We just gotta make five progress and uh, this quest is a victory. So <clears throat> very fun quest. I'm going to raise my threat by two and then I can spend Aragorn's resource to get that overcome by grief off of my threat dial. That's something you really want to do. You really want to get overcome by grief off of your threat dial before you end this quest. Uh, it's pretty important. 
Uh, here I'm putting Aragorn's willpower at six. It's actually only five because I'm not still getting the boost from Elrond's council. I just, I think I just put the die down and didn't realize what I did there. All right, come on, let's find the banner. So I'm going to spend the resource. I draw a card. Nope, another Elrond's council. So it is going to be six willpower because I do have another Elrond's council, but I have no way to draw cards. So it looks like I am not going to find the banner. I have all three copies of Elven Light in hand. I can't discard any of them to use Aragorn to pay for them to pull a card out of my deck because he has a spirit resource icon. So that's a bummer. All right, we're, we're sending a ton. And yeah, we just reveal a two threat enemy that says uh, I got to raise my threat by two. So let's do that. And we are good. And we cleared the stone. So that means we won the quest. All right, so let's take a look at what the other side of the campaign card says. So if we had an Overcome by Fear attached to our threat dial, we'd have to add it to the campaign pool. Very bad, don't do that. But then uh, if Army of the Dead is in the victory display, we get to add it to the campaign pool. Ah, come back, okay. Uh, ally side face up, so he's a four, six, two, eight. He's amazing, he's immune. Uh, the first player gains control. And then uh, set up, the first player takes control of the Army of the Dead. So that's awesome. All right, how far down was this banner? All right, so the top, <laughs> jeez. The very next card was the banner. I just had to draw one more card. All right, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. And I'm just double checking, like, is there any way I could have drawn cards? No, there wasn't. Okay. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed that one. It was a very fun quest. It was uh, nice to have multiple characters and not just Sam and Frodo who's actually able to do some deck building. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.